CSS basics. CSS, cascading style sheets, is the code you use to style your web page. CSS basics takes you through what you need to get started. We'll answer questions like, how do I make my text black or red? How do I make my content show up in such and such a way, uh, such and such a place on the screen? How do I uh, decorate my web page with background images and colors? So what is CSS really? Like HTML, CSS is not really a programming language. It is not a markup language either. It is a style sheet language. This means that it lets you apply styles selectively to elements in HTML documents. For example, to select all the paragraph elements on an HTML page and turn the text within them red, you'd write the CSS. You have a P, you have a P tag being selected and uh, the color property with the value of red. Let's try it out. Paste those three lines of CSS into a new file in your text editor and then save the file as style.css in your styles directory. I'm gonna create a styles folder. I'm gonna use the command line to uh, create my styles folder. So what we're gonna do is inside of our beginner HTML, uh, beginner our, our website, we're gonna create a directory called styles. Change directories into that directory. File called styles.css or style.css. Open that up. Paste these three lines of code in there. Save that. So it says, let's try it out. Paste those three lines of uh, lines of CSS into a new file in your text editor, and then save the file as style.css in your styles directory. But we still need to apply this uh, CSS to your HTML document. Otherwise, the CSS styling won't affect how your browser displays the HTML document. If you haven't been following on with our project, read Dealing with Files and HTML Basics to find out what you need to do first. One, open your index.html file and paste the following line somewhere in the head. Uh, that is between the head, the opening and closing head tags. So go over here. It's my index file. Paste it somewhere within my head. I'll paste it right here at the bottom. Save up. And I'm going to open this up in a live server. As you can see, our paragraphs are now read. To save index.html and load it in your browser, you should see something like this. That's exactly what we see. If your paragraph text is now read, congratulations, congratulations, you've just written your first successful CSS. Anatomy of a CSS rule set. Let's look at the above CSS in a bit more detail. So we have a uh, so we have this picture here. It says the whole structure of uh, the whole structure is called a rule set, but often rule is short uh, rule for short. Note also the names of the individual parts. 
um, we have selector, the HTML element name at the start of the rule set. It selects the elements or elements to be styled. In this case, the P elements um, style a different element, just change the selector name. Declaration, a single role like color, uh, red, uh, specifying which of the element's properties you want to style. Property, properties, ways in which you can style a given HTML element. In this case, color is a property of P, of the P elements. CSS, you choose which properties you want to affect in your rule. Property value. To the right of the property after the colon, we have the property value, which chooses one out of many possible appearances for a given property. There are many color values besides red. No other important parts of the syntax. Each rule apart from the selector must be wrapped in a curly, uh, curly brace and curly braces. Within each declaration, you must use a colon to separate the property from its values. Within each rule set, you must use a semicolon to separate each declaration from the next one. So to modify multiple property values at once, you just need to write them separated by semicolons like this. Color prop property with the value of red and it's semicolon. The next, uh, the width uh, value is closed with a semicolon, and the border semicolon. So basically, we're closing declarations with a semicolon and separating them. <coughs> So selecting multiple elements. You can also select multiple element, uh, select multiple types of elements and apply a single rule set to all of them. Include multiple selectors separated by commas. For example, we have uh, the, the, the P, uh, LI, and the H1 separated by commas. Um, within curly braces, we have the color property with the property value of red closed off with a semicolon. Different types of selectors. There are many different types of selectors. Above, we only looked at element selectors, which select all elements of a given type in the given HTML documents but we can make more specific selections than that. Here are some of the more common types of selectors. Uh, so the selector name is element selector, sometimes called a tag or type selector. What does it select? All HTML elements of the specific type of the specified type, um, and an example would be uh, P, and it selects uh, the P element, the P tag. Uh, the selector name is ID, ID selector. The element on the page with the specified ID. On a given HTML page, you're only allowed one element per ID. Of course, one ID per element. For example, my ID selects 
uh, the p tags ID with the value of uh, with the value name of my dash ID, or uh, for example, can select the a tag. Uh, Yeah, so we have a, a an anchor tag with an ID attribute, and the attribute value is uh, my dash ID. The next one is the next selector name is class selector. Uh, what does it select? The elements on the page, or the element or elements on the page with a specified class, multiple class instances can appear on a page. So uh, you have dot my dash class. Um, and it's, uh, for example, when it selects, uh, and it selects uh, P class equals um, my class and A class equals my class. The next selector name is the attribute selector. The element or elements on the page with the specified attribute, for example, image uh, source, selects image source, my image dot PNG, but not image. The next selector name is pseudo class selector. The specified element or elements, but only when in the specified state, for example, being hovered over, for example, uh, you have the A uh, semicolon or colon hover, and it selects the A tag, but only when the mouse pointer is hovering over the link. There are many more selectors to explore and you can find more detailed, a more detailed list in our selectors guide. Fonts and text. Now that we've explored some CSS basics, let's start adding some more rules and information to our style.css file to make our example look nice. Let's start by getting our fonts and text to look a little better. Uh, number one, first of all, go back and find the output from Google Fonts that you stored somewhere safe. Add the link element somewhere inside your index.html's head. Again, anywhere between the opening and closing head tags. Uh, it, it'll look something like this. So I'm gonna just copy this. Code links your page to a style sheet that downloads the Open Sans font family along with your web page and enables you to set it on your HTML elements using your own style sheet. Number two, next, delete the existing rule you have in your style.css file. It was a good test, but red text doesn't actually look very good. And I guess if, uh, erase this. Save that. Add the following lines in its place, replacing the placeholder line with the actual font family line you got from Google Fonts. Font family just means the fonts you want to use for your text. Oof, excuse me. Number three, add the following lines in its place, replacing the placeholder line with the actual font family line you got from Google Fonts. Number four, 
font family just means that the font fonts or fonts you want to use for your text. This rule sets a global base font and font size for the whole page. Since HTML is the parent element of the whole page and all elements inside it inherit the same font size and font family. So basically what that means is you, you deleted this line up here, right? or you deleted the, the paragraph um, tag, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy this, paste it in your CSS right here, and what you're gonna do is you can actually delete all of this if you want, because it's just like some comment, and then this should be the rest of your output. So what you're gonna do is, me, I copied it, uh, my Google font from right here, but what you would do is this right here, you would change this to the name of your Google font. So if you look right here, it's Open Sans right here. So that is why it says Open Sans right here. So you click Save. All right. No, anything in a CSS document between the uh, forward slash asterisk and the asterisk forward slash or the that's the opening and closing comment tags is a CSS comment which the browser ignores when it renders the code. This is a place for you to write helpful notes on what you are doing. Four, now we'll set font sizes for text containing elements inside the HTML body. H1, Li, and P. We'll also center the text of our heading and set some line height and letter spacing on the body content to make it a bit more readable. So as you can see, we are giving our H1 a font size and we're aligning the text center. And for the P and Li tags, we're giving it a font size of 16 pixels, a line height of two, and a letter spacing of one pixels. So I'm gonna copy this. Save and check it out. It's even better. All right. You can adjust these pixel values to whatever you like to get your design looking how you want. But in general, your design should look like this. Okay. Boxes, boxes, it's all about boxes. One thing you'll notice about writing CSS is that a lot of it is about boxes, setting their size, color, position, etc. Most of the element, uh, HTML elements on your page can be thought of as boxes sitting on top of each other. Not surprising, CSS layout is based principally on the box model. Each of the box, uh, each of the blocks taking up space on your page has properties like this. Uh, padding, the space just around the content. For example, around paragraph text. Then a border, uh, the solid line that sits just outside the padding. And margin, the space around the outside of the element. section we also use with element background color the color behind the elements content and padding uh, color the color of an elements content usually text. text shadow sets a drop shadow on the text inside an element and display uh, sets the display mode of an element but don't worry about this yet so let's get started and add some more CSS to our page. Keep adding these new styles to the bottom of the page. And don't be afraid to experiment with changing values to see how it turns out. Changing the page color. Oh, and the background color of 
uh, 00539F. And this rule sets a background color for the whole page. Change the color code above to whatever color you chose when planning your site. So I'm gonna copy that and oh, since I already have an HTML tag in there, I'm just gonna copy this background. Paste that in here. Okay. Voila, a little blue background. This rule sets a background color for the whole page. Change the color code above to whatever color you, cho you chose when planning your site. Sorting the body out. Uh, so we have a body with a width of 600 pixels, a margin of zero in auto, uh, background color of FF9500, uh, padding of zero, 20 pix, 20 pix, 20 pix and a border of five picks, solid black. All right, now for the body element. There are quite a few declarations here. So let's go through them one, all one by one. Yes, let's go through them all one by one. So we have the width, uh, 600 pixels. This forces the body to always be 600 pixels wide. Uh, we have a margin of zero auto. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this and I don't have a body tag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy all this in there. Actually, I'm gonna just create a body tag. I'll write them down one by one as we're going through it. So body. And this forces the body to always be 600 pixels wide. Uh, we have a margin with a zero auto. When you set two values on a property like margin or pattern, the first value affects the elements top and bottom side. Make it zero in this case. And the second value, uh, affects the left and right side. So here auto is a special value that divides the available horizontal space evenly between left and right. You can also use one, three, or four values as documented here in the link provided. So we're gonna go ahead and body the attribute of margin with the value of zero for the top and bottom and auto for the left and right margin. All right, so then we have background color FF9500. As before, this sets the elements background color We've used a sort of reddish orange for the body as opposed to dark blue for the HTML element. But we feel but feel free to go ahead and experiment. Copy this. Body. Save. And look. Uh, uh, padding. Zero. 20 picks, 20 picks, 20 picks. We have four values set on the padding. So make a bit of space around the content. Uh, this time we are setting no padding on top of the body and 20 pixels on the left, uh, bottom and right. 
the values set top, right, bottom, left, in that order. So zero would be top, 20 would be uh, right, uh, the next 20 would be bottom, and the next 20 would be um, left. And it goes in that order. So it's kind of like going clockwise, or it is, it's going clockwise. Um, so we're gonna copy this. And as with margin, you can also use one, two, or three values as documented on padding syntax. Let's put this in our selector. Let's save that. Order five picks solid black. Uh, and this simply sets a five pixel wide solid black border on all sides of the body. Add this to the body selector. And oh, do that. Back back in there. All right, uh, click save. And as you can see, we have a black border around our body. Okay. Positioning and styling our main page title. So we have H1 with a margin of zero, a padding of 20 picks for the top and bottom, and zero for the uh, left and right horizontal. Horizontal space. Um, then we have color, 00539F, and text shadow, uh, three pixels for the top, three pixels for the right, one pixel for the bottom, and black. Um, you have noticed there's a horrible gap at the top of the body. That happens because browsers apply some default styling to the H1 element, among others, even when you haven't applied any CSS at all. That might sound like a bad idea, but we want even an unstyled web page to have basic readability. To get rid of the gap, we overrode the default styling by setting margin uh, zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter this into Read that again. You may have noticed that a, a horrible gap at the bottom of the body. That happens because browsers uh, apply some default styling to the H1 element, among others. Even when you haven't applied any CSS at all, that might sound like a bad idea, but we want even an unstyled web page to have basic readability. To get rid of the gap, we overwrote the default styling by setting margin zero. Uh, next up, we've set the headings top and bottom padding to 20 pixels and made the heading text the same color as the HTML background color. Uh, one more rather interesting property we've used here is text shadow, which applies a text shadow to the content of the element. Its four values are as follows. The first pixel value sets the horizontal offset. Uh, so I guess these are not. So uh, the first pixel value sets the horizontal offset of the shadow from the text. How far it moves across a negative value uh, moves across. A negative value should move it to the left. Um, the second 
vertical value sets the vertical offset of the shadow from the text, how far it moves down. In this example, a negative value should move it up. The third pixel value sets the blur radius of the shadow. A bigger value will mean a more blurry shadow. Okay, so the first one is horizontal offset. The second one is vertical offset. The third one is blur radius. And so it says the third pixel value sets the blur radius of the shadow. A bigger value will mean a more blurry shadow. The fourth value sets the base color of the shadow. Okay, so we have horizontal, vertical, and blur. We have horizontal offset, vertical offset, and blur radius. And then we have the color of the shadow. Okay. Again, try experimenting with different values to see what you can come up with. Centering the image. Finally, we'll center the image to make it look better. We could use the margin uh, zero auto trick again did earlier for the body, but we also need to do something else. The body element is block level, meaning it takes up space on the page. It have a, it can have margin and other spacing values applied to it. Images on the other hand are inline elements, meaning they can't. So to apply margins to the image, we have to give the image block level behavior using display block. So let's go ahead and add this to our style sheet. It's now centered and it says, note the instructions above assume you are using an image smaller than the width set on the body, 600 pixels. If your image is larger, then it will overflow the body and spill out to the rest of the page. To rectify this, you can either, pre uh, you can either one, reduce the image's width using a graphics editor, or two, size the image using CSS by setting the width property on the image <clears throat> element with a smaller value, for example, 400 pixels. Uh, don't worry if you don't yet understand display block, the block level inline distinction, you will, as you study CSS in more depth, you can find out more about the different available display values at our display reference page. In conclusion, if you have followed all the instructions in this article, you should end up with a page that looks something like this. As you can view our version here. If you get stuck, you can always compare your work with our finished code example on GitHub. Here, we only have really scratched the surface of CSS. To find out more, go to our CSS learning topic. And next, we will be going through JavaScript basics. So I hope to see you next time. And Get ready.